John, you got a lot. You got some big decisions to make, man. Let's say the Niners lose out and the Niners get, you know, the, the eighth pick in the draft. And you'll be in a position to draft a quarterback with some big time athleticism. Trey Lance, Zach Wilson, easy. Take them. No problem. But let's say they don't lose out. What if they win out? What if they beat Washington? The rest of the schedule ain't too tough after that. What if the Niners have like the 15th pick in the draft and the top four guys are gone, John? I'm talking Lawrence, Fields, uh, Wilson, and Lance. What are you going to do at pick 15? Are you going to draft another pocket quarterback to go along with the three you already have, like Kyle Trask? I like Kyle Trask, but he's slow. And he doesn't have a cannon. And he has the best receivers in college football. I got to say, they're so good. So you're going to take that guy with pick 15, a slow pocket port quarterback, and put him behind this awful offensive line. John, I'm looking at you. You're going to do that? Is that the solution here? Get rid of Jimmy Garoppolo. Bring in another guy who can't move and protect himself. Put him behind the worst offensive line in the league, John. And win? Is that the move? John Lynch, I don't know if it is. If you get the 15th pick, you may not really be in a position to take this quarterback that you want. You may need to take a guy in the second or third round who has upside but could be a bust. That could be your spot. So do you bring back Jimmy? Is that what you're going to do, John? Because you better not. I know you like Jimmy more than Kyle because you traded for Jimmy. Kyle reluctantly agreed because he wanted Kirk Cousins. You pulled the trigger. Jimmy is the best thing on your resume. Maybe George Kittle. But getting Jimmy, getting winning that trade, getting over on Bill Belichick, it's the best thing you've done. And I know it's tough to be like, you know what, let's pull the plug and go with Nick Mullins or someone else. But you know what? I think we're seeing that there's a case to be made for that. Uh, you can't tell me that there are things that Jimmy Garoppolo does that Nick doesn't do. They're the same. In fact, it seems to me that in 2020, Nick is a better improviser than Jimmy. Jimmy used to have a great ad lib ability. In 2017, I know it's why you liked him. He made players better. He made that offensive line better. He would extend plays. He was a lot of fun. Now, his version of extending plays is chasing his tail in the pocket. Spins this way. Nope. Spin it back this way. Nope. Spin it back this way. He looks like he doesn't want to scramble. He looks like he doesn't want to get hit. He looks like he doesn't like the pain of football. He looks like he's protecting himself at all times. Can't have that. Nick Mullins is over here making Aaron Donald fall on his face. Nick Mullins, the last few games, has been consistently escaping the pocket and making accurate throws on the run. John, you got you to gotta admit that. That throw that Nick Mullins made to Jordan Reed for the touchdown at the end of the game was one of the best throws, if not the best throw of, Jimmy, of, of, of Nick Mullins' career. And I don't know that Jimmy would make it in 2020. Jimmy stays in the pocket. Jimmy doesn't make throws like that, even attempt throws like that. So you got a quarterback in Nick who's making 750K, who knows your system, and who's improving. He's showing you he can escape the pocket and make throws on the run. He needs to show you he can scramble as well, but that's coming because I just told him. Also, He's showing you he can throw deep. Last week, Nick Mullins had the second longest throw in the NFL in terms of air yards. It went more than 50 yards in the air to Brandon Ayuk. Hell of a throw. The only quarterback in the NFL who had a, lot, a, a farther throw than Nick Mullins was Matt Stafford, who has a John Elway arm. So I'm not saying Nick Mullins has a strong arm, but it's not as weak as people give him, as people say. It's certainly good enough. And I really would like to see what Nick Mullins could do with a competent offensive line. Because when he threw that pass to Brandon Ayuk, that took 3.3 seconds. He had, to, he had to play fake. He had to turn around. He had to wait. It took 3.3 seconds. And miraculously, he got it from the Niners' offensive line. It was one of the few times that all five of their guys blocked people. I'd like to see what Nick Mullins could do with a good offensive line when he consistently has 3.3 seconds and can consistently throw play-action passes. His quarterback rating is 115 with play-action. He's like a little Kirk Cousins. I'd like to see. I mean, give him a good old line and George Kittle and Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk. 
give him a, a $4 million contract and load up on offensive line secondary, that might be your best option. Instead of taking Mac Jones or Kyle Trask with the 15th pick, who's not going to know the offense as well as Nick Mullins, who's not going to be uh, ready to play week one, who may not be an upgrade over Nick Mullins, maybe you just start Nick Mullins next year, draft a quarterback in the mid-rounds and sign a guy. Maybe that's your best move. Because does Trask give you something you don't already have? Do you want to take another quarterback who doesn't scramble, who doesn't move? Or do you want to sign a quarterback who has athletic gifts, who's more gifted than Kyle Trask, who's more gifted than Mac Jones? Give him a one-year deal for $1 million and see what happens. I got a name for you, John. And don't laugh because I know you guys like this guy in 2017. Ultimately, you like Solomon Thomas more. Mitchell Trubisky, all right? Here's what here's why you should consider Mitchell Trubisky. He's toolsy. He's more athletic than any quarterback you're going to get at 15 in the draft. He, let, think of him as Ryan Tannehill, all right? He failed in Chicago. Ryan Tannehill failed in Miami. But Ryan Tannehill ended up not being a bad quarterback. It turned out that Adam Gase is just a bum. And everyone stinks under Adam Gase, except for Peyton Manning. And as soon as Ryan Tannehill got the hell out of there, he's fine. Put him with a competent coordinator on a good team, he's good. Not great, but certainly good enough. Uh, I think Mitchell Trubisky could be the same way. He got drafted by the Bears. He had to play for Matt Nagy, who inherited him and never liked him. Matt Nagy is terrible and should get fired. Doug Peterson, same thing in Philly. He ruined Carson Wentz. These Andy Reid guys run this RPO system that doesn't really help strong arm quarterbacks at all. It's a dink and dunk system. So Carson Wentz, he's expensive. You could trade for him and give him all that money, but he's broken and rich. I mean, the, the word coming out of Philly is that he's aloof. Does he love football? Does he, does he respond to coaching anymore? Or is he rich and doing his own thing? I don't know. Trubisky isn't rich. Trubisky's just a failure, like Ryan Tannehill. But if you compare Trubisky's numbers in Chicago to Tannehill's numbers in Miami, they're identical. The same thing. So I see Trubisky, a guy who runs fast, 4'6 runner just like Tannehill, a guy with a strong arm, a guy who can protect himself, roll out of the pocket, make throws on the run, far more physically gifted than any quarterback you've brought in. I mean, Way more physically gifted than Nick Mullins and C.J. Beathard and, and Jimmy Garoppolo and cheap. Cheap. So give him a one-year deal. Bring him in. Not even a guaranteed one-year deal. Make him earn a spot on the, on the roster. But I really believe you take him away from Matt Nagy and put him with Kyle, let him run play action, let him bootleg out of the, out of the uh, pocket, let him throw quick little passes to Debo, Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle. You just might – revive his career. You just might get a guy you can win with for cheap. John, I recommend going cheap at the quarterback position. I don't think the solution is to give it all away. Trade everything for Matt Stafford or Carson Wentz. I love Matt Stafford. He's a really good player, but there's no offensive line here, John. Matt Stafford will come here and get crushed. Trey Lance will come here and get crushed. Lamar Jackson will come here and get crushed. Deshaun Watson will come here and get crushed. You can't turn every play into a scramble drill. If the quarterback's getting hit in less than two seconds, then the quick passes don't work. The offense won't work unless you address this offensive line. It's such a problem. It's just as big of a problem as quarterback, if not a bigger problem. Nick Mullins is showing more promise than Mike McGlinchey and Colton McKivitz right now. If you take Kyle Trask with the 15th pick, what? how do you address the offensive line? How do you improve it? And we haven't even addressed the corner play, the quarterback play. You can't bring back Jason Verrett and Richard Sherman next year. They're old. They're good against lower tier wide receivers. You got a lot of issues right now, and quarterback may not be the top one right now. Hey, if you if you finish top ten and you can get Trey Lance or you can get Zach Wilson, by all means. But this is a hypothetical where that doesn't happen. Where your options are draft, draft Kyle Trask, get another pocket quarterback who can't 
and put him behind the worst offensive line in the league, or, or go with Nick Mullins and a free agent and a mid-round pick and beef up the offensive line. And if that doesn't work, draft a quarterback in round one in 2021. John, you might want to consider it. You got a five-year deal. You're not on the hot seat. You don't have to draft a quarterback this year because even though you need one, it doesn't mean that one is worth the 15th pick. Maybe Kyle Trask is worth the second round pick. I like him a lot, but you got to admit he's slow. How many slow quarterbacks succeed in the NFL right now? Peyton Manning was slow. Are you feeling that Kyle Trask is going to be Peyton Manning? I don't think so. So is that the pick at 15? I don't know. John, that's something to think about. 